Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to walk through how to install SQL Server 2019 Standard Edition using a, a default GUI install. So the first thing you do is mount the ISO, and then you start the setup program, and you go to the installation page, and you pick Launch a Wizard to install SQL Server 2019 like I just did there. And it's going to go out and check to see if there's any updates for the setup program. And it didn't find any. So next we'll go on and have it do a, a rules check to see if there's anything that needs to download. And then it's going to make sure there's nothing that's going to prevent you from installing SQL Server. And I'm doing a new installation of SQL Server. And it's going to be a named instance rather than the default instance. And since it's standard edition, you need a product key, and I've got that blurred out here. And then you have to accept the license terms to keep on going here. And here's where you pick what features you want to install. And you should only install the features you actually need. Don't just install something because you might need it later. You can always go back later and install it if you really do need it. And here's where you put the name for the named instance in here. And you don't have to do that with a default instance because it uses the name of the machine for the instance name. So this is going to be SQL 2019 STD standard. And here's where you configure the service accounts. And I always check grant perform volume maintenance task privileges. And I change the startup type for the SQL Server agent to automatic. And I'm leaving the service accounts at the defaults for now. In real life, I would go and change those to be a group managed service account or domain account. And then we're going to use mixed mode authentication here. Most applications or a lot of applications, I should say, need that. And you're going to have to put in an SA password if you do that. And you should always add yourself, the current user, as an admin. Because if you don't do those two things, you're not going to be able to log into the SQL Server instance when you're done with all this. So you want to pick an SA password that you're going to remember, and it also is a strong password rather than something silly like password. Don't do that. So you have to put in the password, and it's going to check it to make sure that it matches. And then make sure you go to the Data Directories tab and enter a default database data directory for the data files for your user databases. So I went and set those up in advance. They're already there, but you can create them on the fly too. I think it's better to do it in advance. And then I go in and actually put a different log directory. So that's what's happening here. We're going to have the D drive, have a location for the data files, and then the H drive is going to be a location for the log files. And we're going to also pick a default backup directory. And this is important that you do rather than just fly past it and leave it on the default. I think it's a lot easier to manage and find things if you do this. And depending on how your storage is configured, it also makes a big difference for performance and space because the default installation choice is going to have everything on the C drive, which probably doesn't have enough space or performance or redundancy to support a real SQL Server workload. And then you want to go to the tempdb tab and tell it where you want the tempdb files to be located. And by default, it throws it on the C drive, which is usually not what you want. I'm putting it back on the C drive here because I've got a really fast C drive on this system. And then you look at the max degree of parallelism recommendation, and we'll leave it at 8, the recommendation for this. And then we'll go to the memory tab and see what it recommends because you can leave it at the default, which is usually a bad idea, or you can take the recommendation from the setup program. And I found that sometimes that recommendation is a little on the high side, but this is actually fine in this case as a standard edition. And then you're ready to go. So you click the install button and let it do its thing. And depending on how fast your storage is and also how fast your CPU is, it might take anywhere from a few minutes to quite a bit longer. It should be fairly quick on this system because it's got extremely fast storage and a pretty fast processor. So it's going to go through and install everything and kind of let you go. It's kind of let you see what's going on as it's going. 
and you can see that's going pretty fast. And part of the reason it's going fast is I only selected the database engine. I didn't select a lot of other components. So that is going pretty fast. Plus I already have a default instance on here. So some of the things it would normally install are already installed. We're just installing what's needed for this additional named instance. So once this is finished, then we're gonna take a look at how you go about installing a cumulative update because when you install it from the ISO that you get from Microsoft, it's gonna be the RTM build in most cases. And that's not what you wanna go in production with. You wanna get it patched to the latest cumulative update. So that worked and everything looks fine. Next, we're gonna install a SQL Server 2019 cumulative update. So you download the cumulative update file and then you'll have to extract it like you see right here. And depending how fast your system is from the storage in the CPU, this might take a few seconds to complete. And then once that extracts, it'll automatically start the setup program to install the cumulative update. Now, SQL Server 2017 and newer do not have service packs. All they have is cumulative updates. And you periodically are gonna to wanna to patch your servers so you have all the latest bug fixes and feature enhancements that are released as part of cumulative updates. And it's basically go through and accept the license terms. And then it does a files and use check and in this case, it's complaining that the default instance is running, which is fine. And we'll go ahead and just click Next and let it install the cumulative update. And depending on how fast your system is, this might take a minute or two to install. And be aware that part of installing the cumulative update, it's going to stop the SQL Server service. And then when it's done installing, it's going to restart it. And hopefully it does restart and everything works fine. So you're going to have an outage when you do this. So you don't want to just do this in the middle of the day. This should be a scheduled maintenance outage to patch your SQL Server instance. And this is going pretty quickly on this system. And this is installing SQL Server 2019 Cumulative Update, Cumulative Update 9, which is the latest and greatest at the time of recording. And once this is done, we'll be up to date with our SQL Server build, which is a good thing. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out.